Okay, so uh, we're going to look at projections of maps and how map projections can distort how things really look. So projection is simply the transfer of locations on the earth to a flat surface. So it's super annoying to have to carry around a globe for navigation. You can't exactly fold that up and put it in your glove box or in your backpack. It's super annoying. So uh, there have to be there has to be um, modifications made, obviously, from a circular globe to a flat piece of paper like this. It's much easier to deal with, but there are problems of distortion when you take the features on a round spherical earth and transfer them to a flat paper. So we're going to talk about some of those dis uh, dis distortions. The first uh, type of distortion is shape. Uh, a, the, a pl the shape of a place can be distorted. For example, Antarctica. Uh, Antarctica on most maps that you've seen it looks like it takes up the basically the entire like bottom of the map when in reality the, the uh, Antarctica doesn't take up that nearly as much space as you would see on maps normally. Uh, the second type of distortion is distance. The distance between two places can be uh, greater or lesser than it is in real life on a map because we run into distortion when, uh, when we try to, again, transfer stuff on a round earth to a flat paper. Uh, next is size. Uh, the relative size of a place can be much bigger on a map or smaller than it is in real life. Uh, two examples of this are Greenland and Africa. Greenland is the, on most maps, uh, the huge looking uh, country to the east of Canada. It looks like it's just this massive country when in reality it's not because distortion on maps makes things at the poles, meaning like at the top and the bottom of maps, uh, larger than they really are. Uh, and Africa is distorted uh, on a lot of maps in a uh, to be smaller than it really is. Africa is a big, huge continent, and uh, on a lot of maps, it looks the same size as South America, when really it's much bigger. Uh, the last type of uh, distortion is direction between places. Uh, the direction between places can be distorted. Uh, for example, on some maps. Uh, you may have, it may look like places are parallel to each other when in reality they may be like this because of distortion. So, let's now look at the U.S. Land Ordinance of 1785. This is when the United States is a very young country and you have Manifest Destiny starting, which is, you know, the idea that you learned about before, uh, where the country needs to expand westward. Well, uh, the government decided to implement a system of basically dividing up this land into square sort of parcels uh, that makes it much easier for people to sell land or buy land in the new western part of the country. So uh, what they came up with was a system called townships and ranges. Uh, and what a township is, uh, and, and was back then, is a six square mile area. So they literally took uh, a square of land, six six miles by six miles and that was a township. You don't see this a lot in Texas but in the Northeast there are, are towns where they're called like whatever township like Smith Township. You see this a lot in in the older parts of the country. Um, and so there were lines on the map of the United States uh, that were called principal meridians which run north and south and base lines which run east to west. We're going to continue on with the discussion of the land ordinance and more detailed information about townships. So uh, townships were divided into 36 sections of one mile by one mile each. Uh, and then the sections were divided into quarter sections. So this is a, uh, a, an example of what a township map would look like. Um, they would be, each section would be numbered. That way it makes it easier to say that this person lives in uh, township six, or you know, whatever township, section one, and then quarter section one, two, three, four. Uh, so, it, right here, this map is just an example of how it would be divided up. Uh, this is a section, this is a quarter section, uh, this would be section 12, and it's divided up into quarter sections right here, which is why you don't see the number 12 there. Um, 
but basically a settler or their family would buy one quarter section to live on. A quarter section is about 160 acres, which may not mean much to you. Uh, so that's why I put down here, uh, one acre equals about three quarters of a football field. It's really hard to visualize an acre, but if you Roughly, it's like if you were to take the the end zones off of a football field, that's basically uh, an acre. So one family would have 160 acres to live on, which to us, that seems like a lot because a lot of our houses, especially if you live uh, in, in Dallas or in Mesquite, a lot of houses are built on like quarter acre lots or like 0.15 of an acre. Uh, so 160 acres today, that's a lot of land. Uh, now that we talked about kind of old uh, ways of dividing up land, let's now move to contemporary or modern geographic tools. The first one and the one that you probably use on a daily or, or, or weekly basis is the GPS, a Global Positioning System. Uh, there are things that you never see that allow you to navigate using your smartphone and those things are 24 satellites that are owned and operated by the United States military. Uh, there are tracking stations on the ground that monitor the satellites uh, and then the user must have a receiver uh, and must basically, it, it has to locate at least four satellites and by locating those satellites they can determine your exact location. Uh, so an example of a GPS is using a smartphone or an actual like GPS unit, some people may still have those, uh, to navigate places. Another geographic tool that a lot of uh, governments and just organizations use today is called remote sensing. And that is the acquisition of data uh, about the Earth's surface using satellites. Taking pictures, taking all sorts of measurements of things on the Earth. Uh, and you can get extremely detailed uh, pictures of, of things on the Earth. And the, uh, the smallest object that's able to be seen by remote sensing is basically the size of a meter, uh, which is about three feet by three feet like a square meter. And finally, we have Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. Uh, just about every major city, including Mesquite, uh, has a GIS department. Like, there's people whose jobs it is to, to work with this type of system. Uh, it is a, a software tool where you take layers of electronic maps and you basically layer them on top of one another to get a, a total view of several different things. Uh, and they use these to solve problems all the time. For example, if you're a farmer and you want to know where should I build my farm? Well, there's things you need to know about the different areas that you're looking at, such as are the soils good? Uh, is there forest everywhere? Is it in a floodplain where my house is going to get flooded? Or does somebody already own that land? So you could today use a GIS to layer a map of forests, a map of soils, a map of rivers, and a map of who owns the land uh, to determine the best place to build your farm. Uh, people use these things all the time. Uh, an, a, another term that has to do with GIS is called a mashup. Uh, it do, yes, that does come from the hip-hop term mashup, uh, and a, a mashup is basically a map where you take different sources of information. For example, um, you know, if you're looking at, I don't know, where to, like, where you could get around or whatever, uh, you could find a street map with bus stops labeled on it. Uh, and if you're looking to buy a house somewhere, people do this every single day uh, when they're looking to buy houses, you could take a crime map and layer that uh, on top of a price map and layer that on top of a bus stop map to figure out where the best place to buy a house would be.